customization with the JS framework Bootstrap. Uh, I don't know how many people have heard of Bootstrap. It's, it got pretty popular for a while and then a lot of people started contributing to it. And, uh, and uh, it's, I find it to be uh, rather, uh, I suppose, easy uh, as far as being able to get it started. It doesn't really take any time at all. Uh, and then after that, you, you pretty much have free roam and to do uh, whatever you want and just working within Bootstrap and uh, the CSS and JavaScript and other libraries that come with it. So, get started here. I'll just that. So, so Bootstrap is a front end framework, so it's mostly used you know, for the uh, front end and it uses, utilizes CSS. And basically, it's just a, a large style sheet with a lot of rules. Uh, in the sense that it's, it has an API and it also has uh, a rather intuitive, uh, I would say, um, styling and uh, that comes with the CSS and there's also uh, a lot of uh, libraries that are, um, actually, I, in my opinion, I think are rather uh, organized and it's some of the best documentation I've seen from anything. So if you go to the Bootstrap website, you'll notice the documentation is really well organized. There's, uh, there's information that's uh, really clear and easy to understand. Uh, also, uh, lastly, it kind of uh, focuses more on the CSS, and so there is some jQuery involved. There is JavaScript involved. JavaScript is basically um, what does some of the magic for Bootstrap. Uh, however, a lot of it is uh, designed in a way where the developer or designer or whomever wants to uh, implement it can just pretty much put the libraries into a project and then work from the project um, within the code. So you, it's, the naming convention is, is key to that. So um, these are just the basic requirements. So whenever you start up a new project, you'll Usually you'll have these uh, linked into your uh, into your project, um, commonly in a in a script tag. So uh, the JavaScript um, over here, and then also uh, a minified file for JavaScript as well. And then there's also uh, the Bootstrap CSS and the theme files that come with it. So uh, also. Um, where to customize and how, uh, you can go to bootstrap.com and there's, uh, there's a website and I can show, show that to you guys later, but it's, uh, it's a website that allows you to, you know, pick and choose what you want for your styling and everything like that and then download uh, a JSON file or something like that. So, uh, also, um, it works with, uh, another way that they, excuse me, that they work with it is through less files, and so if you want to do even a little more in-depth customization, you could create your own less files and then program programmatically um, create your CSS and everything like that. So, so for a demo, I just got here uh, a new a new project um, in Visual Studio, and so primarily, uh, from what I've noticed. Uh, it's mostly in HTML, so you'll have HTML, you'll have a, a project set up. So let's see if I can get this a little bit easier to read. So. And you'll see at the top here I have all the, uh, the links, everything linked in from, and these are also on the website, they're on the, the Bootstrap website. Uh, also. Uh, I put in a little bit of JavaScript there. I saw someone made a comment actually on the meetup on the website about um, it is more related to JavaScript. So I, I attempted to put some JavaScript in there to see if I can get it to kind of work with it. it, it there is seem, seemingly some kind of trick to it um, just because a lot of the JavaScript, at least from what I understand, is, is already pre-built um, once you start using Bootstrap and a lot of the the fun magic stuff that happens is already done 
behind or in the background. So, so um, here you'll see um, these columns um, within the class, uh, column mid four, and what Bootstrap is designed in a twelve grid or excuse me, twelve column grid layout. So that's what kind of gives it its responsiveness and why it's so popular on mobile apps and everything like that. Uh, it allows the stream to be shrinked and enlarged and still maintain some type of styling and uh, basically readability and everything like that. So, uh, excuse me. Uh, also, I added down here a table and uh, you'll see it's just a, just a basic table and then it's got some of the bootstrap here like the table hover, the table stripe, the table responsive, and so it just adds some additional styling that comes with the bootstrap. And this is all, this right here all comes from bootstrap and then also, um, I also added the button group which Hopefully, if I, if I get to it, then maybe I can show a little bit of actually how some of that works as well. So, uh, here's a little preview of it. And it's, in through, it's going through Internet Explorer. So, That's the error that comes up when you so you're trying to load jQuery from the CDN. Yeah. So, so try it again. I think you're not actually working out. I don't, know, I, don't know. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I just thought it was. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he's related. But uh, basically, uh, at the top there, there's uh, the jumbo, the jumbotron, which is actually quite a nice uh, uh, or styling that comes with Bootstrap. You'll notice the big uh, square at the top, and and what's kind of unique uh, to Bootstrap it it's kind of works together with MVC and so with Microsoft and everything else, usually creating an ASP.NET project in MVC usually comes with Bootstrap. So as soon as you set up a template, or excuse me, as soon as you use the template, the Bootstrap comes with the ASP.NET application. So uh, essentially, uh, these are the columns. And so since I did a medium four, they're about you know medium size, I believe, and then they're uh, taking up four. So if you think of it as a span, uh, it works almost exactly the same, except uh, there's basically they're combined into the math. So 12, 12 divided by four is three, so there's three columns. 
And so here also is a table with that responsiveness. Uh, it has the uh, striped hover. And so that's something that comes with Bootstrap. And then uh, the uh, toggle, which maybe at the end of this I can do maybe get, get it to work, but I was trying to see if I could squeeze it into the presentation towards the end. However, at least you could kind of see um, what, what you can do there, and then the plugins that come with Bootstrap will help with that. So, so what happens when you resize the window? What does well, the, you resize the window, table responsive do? Actually, that's an excellent question. Uh, whoops. So if I resize the window, you'll see that responsiveness too, and you'll see everything basically line up. And then you might see this maybe in the mobile app where the menu bar is also placed at the top as well, um, into this icon, something similar to that. Um, I've seen it a lot on Android devices, and I haven't really seen it too much on like Windows devices, which is kind of funny because I work with mostly Microsoft, and uh, it seems it seems like I see it a lot on Android. So, uh, but either way, uh, that's basically uh, Bootstrap um, as a whole, and uh, there's a lot you can do with it. Uh, if you get a chance to look at the website, there's there's a lot of content there. There's a lot of documentation, and you pretty much uh, you can also continue that customization, which is kind of what I wanted to focus on was that you'd be able to, you'd be able to select the site.css file that comes with your project, and then you can add whatever CSS stylings onto what's already in a bootstrap, or what's already in a bootstrap, excuse me. So, let's get back to... So, this is... Uh, the libraries uh, that you'll you'll have usually in a project or what you need included um, also with the, uh, the CDN if you choose to use the CDN or which in most cases you might have to from what I understand so either way uh, there's also Bower which is a, another tool you can use for managing those dependencies and stuff like that so uh, I didn't do too much research into that, however, it might be useful. I, I never really had to use anything to manage libraries, but I'm sure if you're going to have a pretty, I suppose, extensive application, you might want to do something like that. So, um, Another key point I wanted to touch on with JavaScript was the data toggle. And the data toggle is something that um, actually will allow you to use some jQuery and to manipulate buttons or check boxes and stuff like that. So it's just an attribute that you would need to have in some of the, uh, some of the elements that are with buttons and uh, other types of uh, controls like that as well or something. Uh, also, uh, you need the active to kind of, as a default, to set, if you have, for example, three buttons and you want one button, to be active, then you set that element with the active um, attribute at the end of the, uh, the button, which is actually right here. So for, for this case, this is a button success. And so the styling that they have for that is like a green kind of bubble shaped button and it has button, button success active and then the other one is button, button success and then there you can kind of see you use the add class if, to use some jQuery to manipulate that and you know change it from active and everything like that so and So basic setup, uh, you download Bootstrap from the website, uh, you reference um, the correct dependencies that may be needed. Uh, typically you'll, you'll need the JavaScript uh, libraries and you'll need the CSS. Uh, the, the fonts uh, may not be necessary, but you might want to put that in there too. 
Uh, also, um, you can modify, and like I said earlier, you can modify and custom any custom styles using the site.css file that will come in the project. If you're using Visual Studio, uh, that'll come with it. Uh, from, I believe if you're using something else that you'll just have to include it in, your, in the directory where you have your project located. So uh, that might be something worth checking ahead of time before you go too, too far into it. So. Um, yeah, and just to touch on the 12 column grid layout, that's um, pretty crucial to the responsive design. So something pretty important to remember and some things to be aware of is it's very good for responsive UI design. There's a lot of documentation provided. Uh, that's uh, actually, I think it's quite good uh, in comparison to anything I've seen on the web. Uh, maybe it's because it comes from Twitter and uh, Twitter uh, it's where Bootstrap was originated, so or at least for, for Twitter. Uh, and also, uh, the reusability with the somatic class names. So all those class names um, that you end up using have some somatic, uh, semantics to it, so that way you're able to know um, right as you're coding what you're going to be doing with those uh, buttons, uh, for example, or anything that you'd like to add to your uh, website. Uh, and yeah, convention is pretty important when it comes to that, and so that's where the magic is involved. And I can answer probably a couple questions about that too, if someone, if anybody has any questions about that. However, um, some disadvantages: um, it is kind of difficult to differentiate from other websites using Bootstrap um, because the user seems to get quite used to that responsiveness. Um, if they're able to, you know get that learning curve, which I suppose is our job, is to make sure that they can learn it like instantaneously <coughs> almost and be able to use it. And then uh, class names are not specific um, about <coughs> implementation. So that's another key thing to kind of remember. And then um, the libraries, for our, they won't accept third-party libraries of JavaScript. So I don't know if that's similar with other um, Frameworks, but essentially that's uh, the, a key component there. What do you mean you won't accept third party libraries? Well, I suppose like any libraries, like, well, I, I don't believe it will let you use Node.js. Well, well, it might let well, you use Node.js. I think the, the problem I've seen with Bootstrap is uh, on their issue tracker. Like, you'll go in and you'll say, I'm having a problem integrating Bootstrap with this other third party library. They won't support you at all. Basically, they'll say, uh, you need to make it work, or they won't. They won't give you any free support for uh, third-party libraries working, integrating with Bootstrap. If you know what I mean. So it, it should it should work, but if you have problems, they're not going to help you out. <laughs> so. And it does have a jQuery dependency. So if you don't want to use jQuery, you lose some of the benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually quite important as well. I'm glad you mentioned that. Oh yes. The other one is you need, um, for Bootstrap UI, the one that integrates with Angular, it, it's only compatible with a specific version of Angular. I don't remember which one. It's like mm -hmm. 2 or 12 or something like that. Oh, wow. So you got to be really careful about that. Oh. The nice thing about Bootstrap UI is that, or Angular UI for Bootstrap, is you don't need to use jQuery. So if you're oh. trying to go jQuery free, maybe. Yeah. maybe. So what you're saying is it's an op it's a it's a good option in comparison to some of the other third party <laughs> libraries. It's the Angular, so to speak. <coughs> uh, there's just a uh, um, just a link there um, that will provide you uh, Bootstrap, in there. and that's pretty much it. Uh, if there's any other questions, it's really, Bootstrap is really just get started quickly and um, with stylings and everything like that. And it's, uh, it's quite elegant when once you get it uh, all organized within that 12 column grid layout. And then after that, you're golden. So, uh, a quick question. So, I, have, I don't have a lot of experience with a lot of the styling frameworks, but when I was playing with Bootstrap, it seemed like I was adding a lot of artificial 
structure into my HTML, like div instead of div, like just re rewrapping everything so I could add different layers of classes. Is that common among other styling frameworks? Like, is that the <coughs> are, you, are you talking about something like the container that's like required? Well, like, like the, the panel, some... I think it's a panel. It's like you have the panel as your outer div, and then you've got a panel header, and then a panel body, and then you've got a paragraph tag inside of it. That, that comes with the semantics, <laughs> so it's, I think there's some give and take there. So if, if you can understand the semantics, semant or excuse me, semantics, um, actually which, uh, with some of the, uh, you know, the styling, the styling that comes with like the div, I mean the div that you need for some of that stuff, uh, I, that helps organize it, but I do know what you're, you're kind of saying, I think, is that there, there does seem to be some kind of artificial stuff going on there, so to speak. But Bootstrap is very opinionated. Um, in a lot of frames, like, like foundation art as well, and I think that's just kind of one of the trade-offs I can make is, you know, you have to follow their their guidelines and, and use their classes, and so um, I, know, I guess that's kind of a, a trade-off they have to make when, when you use these frameworks. What I what I really wanted to show was some of the JavaScript there because I think I think that also will help kind of see some freedom that might be there, but like like. Um, what he just mentioned is there's some some organization that's made there, so that way it stays bootstrap, so to speak. So right, at least that's how I see it. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. yeah thanks. Oh okay. <laughs> so you mentioned if you use Bootstrap on your website, it can make it look like a lot of other websites because yeah, a lot of people use Bootstrap might just use the default theme. Have you messed with using other Bootstrap's themes, and is it hard to do that? I haven't. I haven't tinkered too much with the themes. Um, it seems fairly easy to use. Uh, I, I've never really had any issues with it when setting it up, and uh, that's another thing that wouldn't take really, you know, maybe one or two steps I think to do. Right. And then you can do all the the. Uh, I, I think. I'm not for sure, but you might be able to go to the website and actually create that customization too for some of those themes. So, I'm just, I'm, they just seem to have it separated into different sections. They got it separated into the CSS. They got it separated into the JavaScript. And then they allow you to, the tools and the documentation there, and then there's the themes that they have there. So, it's not too difficult um, from what I've noticed. So, um, that, does that answer your, question, answer your question? As far as difficulty, or I think it would probably be pretty easy then. Yeah, it, it's it's not too difficult uh, from what I've from what, I'm, from what I've noticed. So cool, thank you. So um, I can chime in here too on what we do. So at Gallup, we we've taken the approach of using Bootstrap, but we've gone down to the rest files as opposed to using the compile buffer instead. And so we customize all the rest files to make it not look like. The primary advantage that we get from it is mostly the media breakpoints. Uh, so we know that we can break at, well, I think it's 340, 720, and I forget what the max size is for non iPads. But what we do is we customize all the files and everything. It's the defaults that they are good. We like the defaults, so we go in, customize it, theme it, and through a build process, we just upload the CSS file. So you don't necessarily have to use the themes as long right. as you know specifically which files to target. They have a nice separate data. So as long as you know what to target, then you can always just go ahead and customize it and do it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, and it's pretty easy to do that. Oh yeah, it's, it's oh. pretty trivial. The, the key issue is making sure that you have a build process in place right. that will combine the stuff for you. If you're using less or stats. Uh, well, we use it with less. Uh, Bootstrap does also have a SAS version, but we primarily use it with less though. So we have our two that's in place that will go ahead and compile all that stuff there too, just a similar as well. Nice. And they've, they've already done a lot of, like, they've already made it nice for, like, we use it with less as well at my job. And they've already made it nice, so, like, everything's a variable. Like, all the colors, all yeah. the all the media breakpoints, all the, you know, everything. It's already, they're all variables. So all you have to do is go and replace the less variables and then compile the less. Nice. And you can, you know, customize it. Yeah, I think all you need to know for that is like an add symbol, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's like the only extra new information. But 
At least that's how I see it. There's a lot, one little extra thing to learn there. So. Thank you.